in September of 1995. I was working on the farm that my husband and I own. It is a full-scale farming operation with livestock that consists of beef, pigs, chickens for eggs, and it also has soybeans, corn, alfalfa hay, green beans, and peas in season. On September 13th, 1995, at approximately 6.30 a.m. while doing the morning chores, I went out to feed our chickens which were in the coops in the yard. There are two dogs who are generally with me when doing this chore, and they too were out there, wagging their tails as usual, indicating all is well. This particular day, though, there must have been something spooking them, because both dogs refused to come out of one coop where they always go into. I was wondering what would cause this to happen. They are well trained and not easily spooked. I decided that I would just go ahead and take care of the chickens myself. I never had a problem feeding them previous to this. So, I simply went back in the house for about 20 minutes. I came back out to feed them again. Since I needed more feed than before, I walked across the yard rather than driving my tractor to replenish their food supply. As I crossed over behind where the pigs were, something caught my attention. And as soon as it did, both dogs began barking like crazy. Now that they too saw whatever it was. They were barking up behind the wooded hillside behind our barn. The barking was frantic, like, hey, come here. Hey, come look at this. I looked up the hillside and saw what I best can describe as a large upright canine with its back towards me. It was covered in pitch blackish fur, like coal. It had long hair hanging down its arms inside of its body. It did not touch the ground, though. Its ears were very pointed and cropped. They kind of moved like they were trying to pinpoint where my dogs were barking from, or get an idea of where I was too. Then this thing whirled around quickly, without turning its head, and offered me a full frontal view of itself before it took off running into the woods behind our house. And all I could think to say was, oh my gosh. This was not a bear or a wolf that I have ever seen before in my life. Now, about four weeks goes by, and my husband and I were walking in the same area where this creature had come down from the hillside right behind our house. There are no bears in southern Wisconsin, except for one that has been reported on occasion. But there are wolves and coyotes, so you would think it must have been one of them, if anything at all. We were walking up to the top of the hill when something again caught my attention, and my husband's attention. He actually pointed out where he saw it go through some trees into an old strip mine, he said it reminded him of a black fox with very pointed ears, which is what I would have assumed too. But then, since both dogs reacted to it like they did, I had to rethink that decision and decided it must have been something else. It was at least six feet tall, with very long legs, very muscular. Again, it was no bear or deer. Its rear end was high up in the air when running, but the back leg on each side were bent forward more than on either a dog or coyote, which is what made its movement slightly different. Since this has happened, I've talked to several people who have said they have saw some kind of large black canine creature around that time too. Some even thought that it may be the same one. Now, about three years later, our next door neighbors came over to visit while we were doing some chores, telling us about their sightings too. They had just bought their place in 1994, the year before our encounter. They had just gotten done with their evening chores of feeding, etc. Around 9 p.m., when they were out in their barnyard, they looked up into the sky overhead to see if there was any chance of rain, which there wasn't. Then, both of them saw what they thought at first was a large black dog running across the upper edge of their field, going down over the hillside nearby. The dogs had all come out of the house to greet them, so it must have been after 9.30. The next morning, my husband goes over there to talk to him about what he had saw, because I had told him to, and this is when we found out that they too had seen it. Their description was the same as mine, except they said it was bigger than their German shepherd. The neighbor told me that he thought it might be what some people call a black panther, but he didn't say it exactly like that. That's just what I heard him say to my husband. My mother-in-law lived on the next farm over, and she had an encounter with this creature too. This was August of 1996, 
about 7.30 p.m. at night. She was outside, lambing in the barnyard. She used to raise sheep. She looked up into the sky as well above her house. She heard something large running overhead, like leaping, and saw three of these creatures running across the yard on the upper edge of her yard, all three of them, one behind the other. She said that they were two jet black in color, long tail, and their bellies almost dragging to the ground. They ran into an open strip mine on her neighbor's property. This had been closed for years. But she heard some coyotes yipping and yelping in there, as though they came back out again not too long after going in. Then, at about 8.45 p.m., as she was getting ready to go inside for the night, those same three creatures came back across her yard again, heading toward those same old mines, but instead went down into another part of a now-owned property by the Amish man. He had bought it two months ago. It is partly open and used as pasture land now. My mother-in-law was going to go get her husband to come look at it with her, but then didn't think he would even believe her, so she just went in and got him out of bed instead. He said that when they came back up over the hill, there was a farmer who was driving along in his truck when they crossed the road in front of him. He stopped when my mother-in-law and father-in-law flagged him down and told them what they saw. This man had lived in that town his whole life, hunted all through that same old strip mines since he was a kid. These creatures were not something new to him. When asked what they were and what they looked like, he described them as looking like Black Panthers too. Her husband made it sound like there were several of them, but I think that was just because he wasn't sure of what he saw. So that's four people who have seen this thing over the last 16 years. Three within a month. Another neighbor, who lived a three-fourths mile away, told us his own nephew had seen it one night when riding home on his bike at dusk. He was coming down along an old road through an open strip mine when something big jumped up off the side and into the woods right in his path. The boy described it as being black, having a long stringy tail, and bigger than anything he'd ever seen before. This creature is fast. We know that now. It can jump very high too. It can climb. It will do whatever it can. I've seen what I believe to be its tracks in the snow. But unfortunately... I can't be too sure. The tracks were reminiscent of a very, very large canine print. While the other farmer who bought the other strip mine described seeing one run across his field late last summer, as described seeing it as it was going after his cattle. He lives at least two miles away from us. That's all I have for you right now. Hopefully this is enough for you to understand and believe that these things really do exist. July 4th, 2012, at 2 p.m. I saw the beast while out on a lunch break at work. I work for the U.S. Army. Two nights ago, I just returned from Iraq and was getting ready to go see the Independence Day festivities in my local town. A lot of people gather around basins to watch fireworks and whatnot. The location is near a river basin, where it's very heavily wooded, having lots of vegetation and hills and even some small caves here and there, hidden in some places, but overtaken by thick foliage and vegetation. There's also like a section that goes through this area that troops will use when training, but they never train on July 4th. They don't want to disturb civilians or anybody who decides to stay outdoors on such an occasion. It was now about 2 p.m. when I noticed this creature. It was very big, standing about 7 feet tall, and had dark grayish hair covering its whole body. What was weird about it, though, is the way it looked, and that it walked on its two legs. But it also kind of looked canine and had a strange gait to its walk. I'm talking like half-human, half-canine here. Barely noticeable, though. You know what I mean? Also, something else strange about this creature is that at times, when it would figure someone out noticed it, rather than run away or make any attempt to hide itself, it would stand there, staring right back at you, with an angry look in its eyes like it wanted to attack you if it could. Whatever it could do. It acted like it couldn't get past whatever was between you and it, assuming it would be a fence or whatnot. At one point, it seemed as if it wanted to walk away from us all. So with a light jog kind of step, he or it sped off into the nearby vegetation, quickly dropping out of sight. I got a good look at it, though 
and what caught my eye the most was its eyes. They were a bright, striking yellow, almost like those things you see in old movies from back in the 60s that kids used to stare into. You know, those little kaleidoscope gizmos. They would turn them around until they saw something cool. Those kaleidoscope things always had a slight greenish glow to them, though rather than a brighter yellow distinct color. That brings me back to his eyes. They also had a greenish glow to them, but they were distinctly yellow. I think the only other times I've seen eyes like his was when I was doing research on vampires and lichens back in high school for a project of mine. I did it, because it was around Halloween. This might sound weird or even unbelievable for you guys because it's kind of mind-boggling for me too. But what can I say? It happened. Back then, in 2008 though, something didn't feel right about the way his gaze pierced through me, as if he was daring me to come closer so he could break my neck if not literally eat me alive. Like dark matter incarnate. That's how intense his gaze and mine felt. It was like staring into an abyss or some other dimension on a quantum level. I had to look away. Well, anyway, that's all for this story. All in all, though, it was a very scary encounter, with something very strange, if you can't believe me. If not, it's up to you. I know what I saw, but then again... Maybe I imagined the whole thing due to my PTSD from being in Iraq at the time. Either way, I'm still afraid of going out there, especially on July 4th. It's like it was a tempt of fate, purposely walking right into its territory, you know? You never know what could happen when meeting creatures like him on an open field where they have far more room to run around and get away from any barriers that people might put between them and their human prey. Polish police sergeant, identified as Sergeant Slawomir Rakowski, was walking his beat just outside of Warsaw when he heard a thumping noise and saw something moving towards him in the darkness. At first glance, it appeared to be a bear standing on its hind legs, coming at him with great speed. The canine-like creature ran very upright and on two legs instead of all fours, the way a normal wolf or canine would do. But this circular pattern is not completely new to us, so we will dismiss the idea that we are dealing only with an upright walking canine spotted thing here. More research is needed before we can make such sweeping claims without doubting ourselves later. The creature had a very large head, similar to that of a wolf. The head had bulging eyes on the other sides, a single flaring nostril in the center, and its body was covered with very short fur over most parts of it. Sergeant Rakowski got his weapon drawn after the thing looked directly at him and charged. However, it ran off when he pulled out his gun, but remained watching him from afar. He said he could see its eyes. The beast then disappeared into the woods before anything else had happened. And Princeton Winton and his friend were coming down the mountain after a hike. They had not told anybody where they were going or when they would be back and by roughly 2.30, it was getting dark. So we went looking for them. We hadn't found them at all in any of their usual haunts, and we were about to give up when we ran into three strangers sitting on a blanket beside one of the trails. They said that they had been stranded there due to their ship had crash-landed on top of Mount Shasta. All they had with them was some basic survival equipment. Now, I should say this. The fact that they claimed that they were crash-landed there, I mean, these were total hippies. I think they had taken a lot of acid and were pretty much just cracked out. Or as I like to say, fizzled out. They had their sleeping bags, cooking utensils, but nothing that looked like an actual spaceship, of course. They kept going on about feeling like they were half alien, half human. Again, guys, hippies. It didn't look anything like conventional spacecraft either. Just something vaguely egg-shaped. Also, it didn't seem to be in any way like they really knew what they were talking about. But we did help them get down to lower elevations, and they offered us a ride, but we kindly declined. We could make it back if we hurried to Princeton and his friend, which we did eventually find. They told us that they were chased by a large bipedal canine, which we thought was very interesting, describing the events at hand. And once we heard his description of the creature, we knew that this was something else entirely. He claimed that he was chased by a large wolf that stood upright 
and dropped down back on all fours once it got out of their territory. He claims that he came between this thing and a hunt, which is why it chased after him. Although he kept asking me, what kind of wolf stands up on two legs like that? And why was it so large? I was driving home from work at about 11 p.m. I got up to about highway speed at Northeast 122nd Street in Portland, Oregon, when all the power went out in my car. The radio stopped working. The headlights turned off, leaving me with just city streetlights to see by. And only every other one was working. And then I saw it. Standing in the road, about 10 feet ahead of us was what looked like a big wolf dog. It wasn't really furry, but looked more like the skin had been turned inside out. It was grotesque, and there were multiple people screaming. Its fur, its eyes, its tongue, even the pads of its feet were all black and exposed and manged. It stood still as I approached it and got closer until it revealed all of its teeth. Every single one of them. It had an entire mouth full of needle-sharp black teeth. This all happened in an instant, and I swerved to avoid hitting it. I drove down a side street for fear of smashing into a tree or something if I tried going around it. As I made my turns, I kept checking my rearview mirror, thinking that surely the thing wouldn't just stand there and let me drive away from it. But as I turned onto 122nd from Sandy Boulevard, the thing was gone, completely vanished without a trace. I have no idea how to account for what I witnessed, but I was not the only one. Several other drivers saw it too. I'm surprised it has not been reported on. This was when I was 15. This was about 1.15 in the morning, in the middle of the forest. I was laying on my back, looking up and watching the sky. A friend and I were out camping together, watching meteor showers. This was a girl I liked a lot, so I tried to do the romantic stuff with her to try and get out of the friend zone, which never ended up working. Although, the stars and the meteor shower which were amazing, if you've never seen one before. I awoke, just as I saw what looked like a wolf, or a big German shepherd dog on its hind legs, running through a very thick patch of woods. It only happened for a second, but I distinctly remember the long muzzle and pointed ears. Now... I had a second encounter as well. This was more exciting. It was late at night, after a small barbecue or party at my uncle's farm. This was also miles north of Ann Arbor. I was coming out of the barn to get some more food when I heard some branches snapping. This was right in the tree line to my right. My first thought was either bear or maybe a deer, so I stayed still because it sounded large. I turned and saw the creature move right around the base of a tree to my right, maybe 40 feet away if not closer. I decided it wasn't anything that I wanted to deal with. This thing had have easily been 7 feet tall, moving on two legs up the hill towards me in my direction. It looked very pale, but there were no other features that stood out since it was getting dark. Once again, it saw me, began to approach me, and then turned around as other family were coming to the barn like it wanted to try and stay concealed and hidden, and it disappeared quickly into the woods. It is now four days later, and I haven't heard anything else from anybody in my area regarding any strange things going on lately, but I'll try keeping my eyes open, just in case. I'm an avid outdoorsman, hunter, fisher, trapper, and more. I've been hunting and trapping and fishing in some of the same areas my entire life. I look for new places to hunt as often as possible, and am usually on the move, only returning to a stand now or an area if it has proven itself worth returning to, hence why I try and stay in the same area, but also try and explore other avenues. I'm out every day, or so, and I experience all types of weather conditions and situations throughout the year. I prefer to be as well versed in the wild as possible and have as much knowledge about survival as possible. See, all this provides me with first-hand knowledge of all types of wildlife, their behavior, which is something many hunters rarely see. For instance, most hunters don't realize that deer will attack other animals or people when they feel threatened by them, even humans who are much bigger than them. 
I make my own stands at times, but mostly existing ones, or tree shacks. The majority of stands are elevated, about 6 feet off the ground, while most tree shacks are stilts, built about 12 feet above ground level. I've encountered many things in my life, but nothing like the following, which I'm going to share with you now. It's a true story that took place just this past summer. Now, it was several years, while hunting up north near North Bay, Ontario, and I saw my first Sasquatch, or Bigfoot. I'm not sure what you want to call it. I feel weird even saying that because it looked more on the canine side, but I'll let you decide. Even though I'd seen one before, it still did not prepare me for what happened. So, I used trail cameras to monitor our game, and to keep an eye on things in general. We're not the only ones. Even another hunter showed up one evening with his own trail camera to set up alongside ours. We'd been seeing pictures of a giant black bear for over two weeks now. This is when I decided to go sit in one of our tree stands at about 8pm after work, and maybe I can catch a glimpse of this big brune. It wasn't long before I saw something moving around down near the base of a large poplar tree, roughly 115 yards away. Initially, I thought it was one of my hunting buddies messing around, but quickly realized that whatever it was, was much larger than any human, even though it appeared to be crouching or kneeling, while still behind some bush covering. I thought it could be a bear, but bears usually don't cross open areas as quickly as I was seeing this thing do, nor were there any kind of footprints of any kind in the immediate area that I noticed. I realized right away that something unusual was going on. Immediately, got my video camera out and tried to capture whatever it was on tape. The creature appeared to have long dark hair or fur covering its body. Even though you couldn't see its face at first, it had been crouching behind some undergrowth. But you could tell from its size and its head that it must have been very, very large. It stood up just for a minute, looked straight in my direction, and now I could clearly see what looked like a snout and an elongated face, having blood-red eyes, and judging by the size of it, it had to have at least been over seven feet tall, if not larger. The creature's arms were held straight down against its body while walking. To be honest, it looked like a large hairy man or a gorilla, but with the head or face of a dog. I turned on my video camera but could not get any closer. I was afraid that it would spot me or hear me coming through the deadfall between us. It also seemed to be aware that there were other hunters in the area. I made a long detour around where our tree stand was located, just before disappearing over the hill into some thicker bush cover. I estimate this thing to stand well over seven feet tall. At no time did I see its face super clearly, but judging by how quickly it crossed an open area and the height of whatever it was, it had to be well over seven feet. What was this thing? What does it want? We often hear of Bigfoot or Sasquatch sightings, but those are usually far south of where we live. I've never seen anything like this before, and not like this, let alone in broad daylight. We also saw what appeared to be fairly fresh footprints on the following day, but couldn't find any other tracks due to the dry condition of the forest floor at that time of year. When I got home later, I searched online for any reports of Sasquatch sightings in our area, it came across one story on some cryptozoology site written by another hunter who claimed he'd also seen one six years prior. I had no idea there was somebody else on here who had seen one before. We've talked about what we saw and agree on many of the details, but he says his creature was standing beside the tree where it had been kneeling when he first spotted it. Says that its shoulders were at least as high as his own, 6'4". I believe the creature I saw was different. His creature had more of a Neanderthal look, an actual bridge nose and a strong brow bone, whereas mine looked much more canine in the face. Well, that evening, it must have been female because ours was also much larger than his, and very tall. Not to mention the shoulders were probably close to seven feet above the ground. I don't know what this thing is, but it looks like it can't be too far removed from us, evolutionary-wise. We've seen many different mammals in our woods over the years, including black bear, we live next to Algonquin Park, moose, white-tailed deer, and coyotes, but we've never encountered anything like this before. 
I guess we'll just have to keep watching and waiting for another sighting. My sighting definitely stands as bizarre, but I believe it to be a dogman. I think it would have been easier to dismiss if I'd just seen a large dog, but this thing acted very strange. It was definitely more intelligent than an average mutt. I saw it mainly from the profile as it was slowly walking away from me, looking right towards another tree, 200 yards away, across open land in a tree line. There were four to five other people with 50 feet of me on the deck. They didn't see what I saw. They were not looking in that direction at all, since it happened so quickly. It looked like something was moving around over there, but with binoculars, you could not tell exactly what. Now, at first glance, it appeared to be roughly man-sized and shaped, although too far away to make out any fine details. I was just looking at it for a few seconds, trying to figure out what I'm looking at. I had this feeling of dread about it, but also fascination, disbelief, as well as curiosity. Like, something so strange should not exist on our planet, yet I am still somehow seeing it right in front of me. I don't know why, but my first thought was Bigfoot or Sasquatch. It quickly went from that to a dogman or a werewolf in my head. So very fast, there is no way it could have been anything else in hindsight. Although, honestly, if somebody asked me before today what I thought dogman looked like, I would have said a large bear, human, or gorilla with mange. My brain just couldn't process what I was looking at. I've never seen anything that looks remotely like this thing in my life and have no frame of reference to compare it to, in the wild. It was very strange and unnatural looking. It looked somewhat thin and gaunt, but also lean and muscular at the same time. It was definitely not overweight, fat, or bloated, as some dogman witnesses have claimed in the past, from what I've read online. If you took a typical Department of Transportation worker, wearing bright orange overalls and stood him a hundred yards away, he would look something like that only much bigger. That is how much he stood out. It all lasted for about three to five seconds, and it made this weird sound that I can't even begin to recreate for you. It was almost like a whooping sound, but not. Kind of like a mix between a whoop and a howl. And the tone was different. It was very deep and bassy. It also was accompanied by this lower rumbling growl underneath it, as if it were trying to amplify its voice and make itself louder. It's very hard to explain. I've been hunting in this area since I was a small child. I have never seen anything like that before. I should probably reiterate my statement about it standing out in bright orange clothing. I don't mean literally orange. I just mean to me that it stood out like that, where it stuck out like a sore thumb. I just thought I should clear that detail up. We also hunt deer and occasionally elk here every year from late September to mid-January. There are also tons of coyotes out here too, but they normally run away from us when we approach them. We always have shotguns and are heavily armed. We never come out here without weapons. That's just dumb. We know this thing was definitely more on edge than I have ever seen a coyote act, let alone any other kind of animal. It just had this bizarre look about it, a strange demeanor that seemed very out of place in the northern Michigan woods. I grew up hunting and fishing with my father every year since I was old enough to walk. I'm not too phased by encountering something rare or unusual while outdoors, due to all the crazy stuff I have seen over the years. This is why I am so confident in what I saw, albeit an extremely rare and unusual thing to see for sure. The whole thing lasted around 7 seconds total before it disappeared behind another tree line at the edge of the property. Then it was gone from sight. There were a few other hunters within 50 feet of me. After this sighting, I actually returned back to the same location about a week or 10 days later. Maybe I would encounter it again. Or maybe I would encounter it while white-tailed deer hunting in my family's tree stand. But all I saw was a cougar across the field about 200 plus yards away. Quite odd here again in northern Michigan. We don't really have many mountain lions here at all, or anywhere else for that matter but I never saw this strange dog thing again. I wonder what it could have been. The only thing I could think of is I've heard reports of the Michigan dogman, but I know very little about it. Is that possibly what I witnessed?
My father and I were hunting west of Northumberland, Pennsylvania, on some state land. We had been out for a couple of hours when we decided to head back to the truck. It was just after dark, as we had been hunting since 4 a.m. that morning. We headed down a logging road towards the parking area where my dad's truck was parked off a side road. To get there was about a mile walk through some pretty dense forest, away from the nearest power line cut, so you couldn't see anything until you reached it. As we got closer, we saw something moving up ahead on our left, but at first did not pay much attention. There are usually deer in this area, which moves around sometimes before starting their evening feeding activity. However, as we got closer, it became apparent that this was no deer. It was about six to seven feet tall, estimate only, with very broad shoulders and completely covered in reddish brown hair, standing up on two legs. There was no hawks on the leg at all either. This was distinctly human, in every sense of the word. Just seeing the sight of this made your hair stand on end. Nearing around 1 o'clock a.m., while hunting on state land, my father heard something moving towards him at a fast pace amongst the heavy brush to his right side. He immediately got his rifle up, looked for whatever was making all the noise, but could not see anything. He slowly began to back away, trying to get around some nearby trees without cutting himself off from where I was at. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, an animal came bursting out of the brush, its left side heading straight for him. It came so close to him, he could feel its hot breath on his left side, before my father ended up stumbling backwards and fell over, over a downed tree. The animal bluff-charged my father. It stopped about five feet from him. We have every reason to believe that this was a dogman, or werewolf sighting, due to the following things. Number one, the size of it. Six to seven feet tall with very broad shoulders, completely covered in dark hair, standing upright, and looking very, very canine. Number two, its speed. This thing moved abnormally fast, too fast for a man or a woman in a suit, and faster than a deer or any other known animal. Number three, it acted like no other wild animal we have seen before. Deer, bear, elk, turkey, etc. They will all typically either run away or charge you if they feel threatened, especially if humans are directly between them and the direction they want to go, or food, for example. But this animal, it stopped after it had my father partially surrounded. It was like it wasn't afraid of him at all, even though he's six foot tall and 280 pounds with a 30 odd six rifle. Number four, the fact that it came out of nowhere without any warning. We don't know why it didn't attack, but chose to bluff charge instead. But we do know that the other animals won't simply not give you any warning before attacking. So I'm certain that this leads me to believe the only logical answer is that this creature, whatever it was, didn't want to. Number five, this animal is no known native North American species of mammal. There are no sirens located out here. I have never heard a sound like that out here, or anywhere before. And we've all heard stories of Sasquatch being out here, but I'm skeptical of this stuff, and joke about it usually on every outing. I thought it was unusual, but Bigfoot was definitely not my first answer as to what we saw. Number six, the distinct smell. This thing smelt like rotting flesh, wet dog, and blood. My father claims it is the worst smell he's ever had in his life. And number seven, this animal continued on past my father after they made eye contact for about 10 seconds, showing no fear or aggression towards him whatsoever. It just kept moving onto the trees with its back to him by at least 40 feet away, looking right at him while it moved. Then, it went behind some trees and disappeared from sight, all while staying completely and utterly silent. I think this thing knew exactly what we were, but was uninterested in us for whatever reason. I'm sure if we had tried to shoot at it with our rifles while standing there, it probably would have had a much different reaction. It did stop about five feet from me, standing there looking at me, like it was sizing me up, determining if it wanted to eat me. Although I did have my rifle trained on it the whole time, but was shaking so bad from being so close to this thing, I didn't even know if I could hit it or not. My father jumped up after he fell over the tree, stood between it and myself. The animal looked at him briefly, turned its head back towards me, 
still standing there impassively, staring directly at me again, with no aggression whatsoever, still just kind of sizing me up. After maybe another 20 grueling seconds, it slowly turned away from us, moving through some low-hanging branches into the woods again without any noise for the second time. I think it just stared at us, steadied us, as if it decided that it didn't want to mess with us, and left. Afterwards, the forest was dead silent, not a noise, and after about 30 seconds, the noise began to slowly fade back, just enough time for us to turn around and track our path back to the way we came. We didn't sleep much that night. We went back where we saw this thing in the morning, but all that was there was some huge footprints in an area of really soft soil, very large canine prints, which we failed to cast. We did find one set of tracks, but they kind of stopped after a while. They were not Bigfoot. They were not bear. They were like unlike any tracks I had seen before. Now these tracks were also probably about 10 inches long and 6 inches wide, with a stride of nearly 4 feet. This was definitely the creature we had seen. You can even see the massive indent in the soft ground from how heavy this was. This is exactly where we saw the thing walk, and exactly what this creature was. The footprints went out deep into the brush and disappeared, leading me to believe that this creature is roaming on here for a long time. We are 100% certain that this was not a Bigfoot or anything else that has been talked about for decades now. The reason I decided to come forward with my story is there's no way to know how many of these things are out here, and the encounter did not really feel too threatening. Me and my father believe it was curious about our presence, but uninterested in conflict. It felt like it wanted us out, but not to a confliction level. Maybe it was more curious. We were also completely alone during this experience, which makes me confident that we weren't just seeing something normal. Again, we did not feel any malice coming from it. We were not afraid that we might be harmed by this thing. It felt like we were being observed and thoroughly checked out to see if we were a threat. I know what we saw. Unless you've been there yourself, you will never know, really. My wife and I were traveling north on Highway 1 to do some camping, about 20 miles south of Sacramento in the early evening time. We estimate sometime after 9 p.m. We passed a curve in the road, and we both simultaneously noticed something to our right, about one kilometer away standing right off the roadside. We could see it very clearly. There were no fences or woods blocking our view. Neither of us said anything at first. I think we were in shock, but then we each started asking each other, Did you see that? We were both in total disbelief. I had to turn around and go back, which made me a little nauseous. This thing was such a strange sight. It looked like some kind of very tall, eight to nine foot tall, man-like creature on two legs with very hairy, dark, black-brown skin. It was facing us, with its right side toward the road, its left shoulder slightly closer to us. It seemed like it had long hair, but it was matted in some places, and not in the others. If there had ever been a real-life living werewolf, we were seeing it. Now, there are two other stories about this creature. One is an encounter by a hiker that I know of, which I will include later on. The other is an encounter by a couple. She said, This creature looked like something out of The Hobbit. Very long arms, very fantasy, very bushy hair, and very just strange looking. It looked more ape-like than human, she said. A very long snout, exaggerated features, and very large black eyes. It was very creepy looking. It too observed her as she was walking to her mailbox in the morning before going back behind a tree and disappearing. She said she totally got the creeps. Her and I were so freaked out, we didn't even pull over either. As for myself and my wife, we drove very fast back into town, telling the police what we saw. Now my other friend who was hiking claims that he was driving through the woods when he sees this tall, dark creature walking into the road in front of him. He began to slow down and stared at it intently before realizing this wasn't human nor was it somebody casually walking around in a costume, and then turned around and glared menacingly at him through glowing red eyes. At this point, he was completely panic-stricken, flooring it and did not stop or care 
about hitting it until he was several kilometers away from the scene. I do understand that others have made reports about the creature making a strange howling sound. I also know of two other people who say they saw one. I'm unsure if they're being honest. They just seemed very off to me for some reason, and I can't say why. I have been back to that spot several times since then, but never had the guts to get out of my car and go look around in the area where we saw it. I truly believe we saw something that night, but I don't think it was a Bigfoot. This is just my opinion, though. In March of 1991, I was returning home after one night. I was not far into my journey, when suddenly, in front of me on the road, I see a large black animal that stands completely upright and crosses the road. It actually ran across the road in a very nocturnal fashion, staying to the shadows as much as possible. I immediately stopped my car and turned off the engine so that I could listen for it to come back. But after a few moments, I saw that there was no chance of that ever happening. As I looked at the place where it had been standing in front of my car, I couldn't believe what I saw. Coming from over the road ahead, and going into the woods on the other side. I saw the head and shoulders of another black animal that was also running into the forest. I believe this was a different one. It ran past a lighted area on the side of the road that comes from a house, which I could just see faintly in the distance. The speed at which it ran would suggest its size to be over eight feet tall, not counting the head and shoulder length. I think it was pretty broad, the shoulder width of this animal appeared to be as large as the height of my car, and I'm not a big man at 6'3". Its head seemed to be held high, and it appeared to have long hair hanging down from its back and belly, but not from the back area or shoulders. It didn't look like it was carrying anything in its arms, but it may have had something around its chest, which was hard to make out. The light was behind this creature and was not super bright. This all happened very quickly. I probably only saw the animal for less than a total of five seconds before it ran completely out of sight, deep into the tree line. I only had a very short window of opportunity to see this animal, as it was moving from my right-hand side into my left-hand field of view, and I had to swerve slightly with the car in order to keep it in sight. It happened so quickly that I could not even tell if it was on all fours, or if it had been standing up the entire time. All I know is that it ran very quickly at a speed which was too fast to have ever been human, or somebody out there in a suit, that's for sure. I've heard of skinwalkers before, but I'm not sure that's what this was. I'm reaching out to you first to see if maybe that's what I saw, or if it was something else entirely. So, I was 17 years old, fishing in a town called Fernley, Nevada, it's basically in the middle of nowhere with lots of open land and only one tree lined canals for houses. I was with two friends at my house near one canal ends and another starts. That's about two miles away from civilization. And all three of us saw what looked like a large six foot tall werewolf walking along the tree line of the canal. It was light at the time, but it had just begun to go to dusk. So everything was still very visible. It moved extremely fast and very fluid-like, with no discernible gait. We all saw the same thing, and I know both of my friends will admit it to you if you ask them. We all saw it, and we were all absolutely terrified. We ran home. I tried looking for tracks or footprints, but didn't find anything matching what we'd seen. I'm not saying that I saw a werewolf, but maybe something like one. It could be completely fabrication of memory as well, though which is why I'm reaching out to you. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I swear this is true. And until recently, probably because I haven't thought about it for years, I was absolutely convinced that I had seen something supernatural that night. Any information would be great. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks. My brother and I hunt the turkeys out here every spring. Have been, since we were both young boys. This time, I think this large wolf had eaten most of them, or so we thought. Our neighbor is a wolf hunter, and he said there was no wolves around. 
this hunt, we were coming home the same way every time. So I decided to take another path. We didn't see anything unusual until I noticed down in the swale, they call a creek here, some really, really big animal tracks. They looked like my boots for size, but long and narrow. The hair on them wasn't as coarse as a dog or a coyote, but much more fine, with each print almost perfectly placed side by side from one another. Followed those tracks until they went out of sight. They ended at a good-sized pile of fresh dirt, about the size of a grave, if you ask me. But there was nothing there except that it had been dug up before. There was the end of my path. Went back home to get my shovel and found nothing. I've seen lots of wolves in this area, but nothing like what they look like or those tracks were left by. We've seen this thing before in another part of the state, in West Virginia, when we were also turkey hunting years ago. We heard something in the woods, and it was somebody running through. It came crashing out of the brush and snorted at us. Looked like a large chimpanzee or something with long arms and a thick body, but a head that was kind of like a dog or a coyote's. It was really strange looking. Never seen anything before or since that can explain it. I even seen this thing run across the road one time, leaving a bar I used to work at after dark, going from the city to the county line. It took me a sec to figure out what I was looking at, of how darn fast it moved, even for being so big. When you see stuff like that, you don't forget it easy. It still creeps me out thinking about it. I don't know the whole story, but I guess they arrested a guy for killing people and placing them in various spots. They didn't show photos of him, so you don't see his picture, and I guess he was very hairy and had an extremely abnormal face with red eyes. But there were no reports or pictures that looked like those tracks we seen, which were nothing like a bear or dog tracks either. And no, they were not large human tracks, aka Bigfoot. I wish now, though, that I would have followed those tracks further, to see where they ended, as far as a den site. I think every time we heard anything back there, it was probably some kind of animal with human DNA messing around. Never took time to find out, though, what it was. All signs point to this thing being really newsworthy. In 2011, I got a report from a trucker who reported seeing this strange upright walking canine that he describes looking just like a werewolf. This is his story. I was at a truck stop in Delaware and had parked facing the interstate where I could get satellite TV and sleeping in my cab. It was roughly 3.34 a.m. I remember. I had just glanced over at the clock before this happened. So I turned off all the interior lights so it would be dark, but not enough for me to go to sleep just yet. Just after turning off all my lights, I happened to look out over where people park and saw something blackish and gray, about six feet tall, moving very fast from the timber and swamplands into a patch of super thick brush. And right when I was starting to think, what the heck is that? I heard what would be about 75 yards or so away further be like a very, very large dog, like growl, bark, or roar. And it literally made me instantly terrified. I pulled out my puny pocket knife. It's all I had. And slowly, I sat there by myself in the cab of my truck, thinking, who am I going to talk to? Who's going to believe me? Who's not going to see me as a total nut job? So I decided to just turn all my lights and leave. I've been hunting since I was nine. I'm 27 now. And I know for certain, this was no raccoon or coyote or anything or like any other animals around here. This also includes the rare cougar, which the DNR says does not exist around here. But I know good reliable people who have seen them. And I looked up every cougar call and sound I could find. Nothing comes even remotely close to it. I'm not scared of anything in the woods, but I know we're not supposed to have blackish gray, six foot tall upright animals in this county. I'm pretty well confused about the whole thing. And the first time in my life, I've been actually scared of the forest. Yeah, I got a good look at the thing, even though it only lasted for a few seconds. But it looked like a flipping werewolf. It was maybe a hundred yards from me, but I could see it perfectly in the darkish moonlight. Even though it wasn't that bright out, I saw enough to scare me. Hello. I have a couple of more stories to share with you. This one was sent in many years ago. It's by a gentleman who wants to remain anonymous, 
but told his harrowing story about how he was attacked when elk hunting out in Utah. Here's the story. I was elk hunting in Utah one time back when I was about 20 years old. It was the fall of the year, and I had been camping there for a while. One night, after going to sleep, my dogs started going crazy, barking at something outside my camper. At first, I thought it might have been a bear trying to get into my trash. So I got up, grabbed a flashlight and handgun, just in case anything did happen to be out there that shouldn't be. It's never a good thing to assume unless you know for sure without any doubt. So I opened up the door to my camper and looked outside. Looking around everywhere with the beam from my flashlight, scanning over everything, until suddenly, something large dropped down from the trees above and landed right behind me. I stood there in complete and total shock, looking at a creature, now standing about eight feet away from me. Long gangly arms and hands, almost down to its knees, claws looking like knives, and a face looking like the werewolf from American Werewolf in London. The light from my flashlight highlighting every feature on its face perfectly. This was terror incarnate. It's like if you took a man and mixed it with a wolf. That's exactly what I was looking at. Around its neck, I'll never forget, it had this large thick black mane, the same way a lion does. But if this thing was not a killing machine, I don't know what is. I stood there for just a few seconds that felt like an eternity, trying to process what I was seeing. Was this real or not? It quickly grinned at me, like it wanted me to see it, just to be terrorized, and quickly backstepped and vanished in the shadows. The only thing unusual about the way it sprinted and disappeared so quick is it did not use its arms or hands, like it did not go down on its fours. It actually stepped back on two legs like a man would. Anyway, after all this took place, my dogs began going crazy again, barking louder than ever before at something else outside of the dark. I knew that thing was still lingering. I was terrified. I turned off all my lights, shutting a lock in the door, crawling back into bed alone, keeping my handgun fully loaded and the safety off, ready for war at any moment. As I lay there in silence, trying to get some sleep after that bizarre and terrifying encounter with a living nightmare, just before magically dozing off to sleep, an extremely loud, high-pitched scream came from somewhere very close by outside in the woods. It sounded like something you would expect if somebody or something got hurt very badly. Now, I want to reiterate that this event took place many years ago, and if I can't remember if it was a man's voice, I heard or something else entirely. So let me tell you about what happened the next day to my camper. I went outside to see what might have happened at first light, but unfortunately, somebody of incredible size and strength had taken my truck and turned it on its side, smashing out all my windows with their fists, tearing off both driver's side doors, ripping up all my seats, and breaking the steering wheel. But what was most disturbing beyond all that was whatever did it also spent some time trying to stomp out any evidence that it had left behind covering most of the tracks with its own feet, which is why there were so many incredibly large canine footprints beyond my trailer. I had to have a buddy come pick me up. There was no way I could report this to any police. Nobody would believe me. But there was another weird thing about that night that happened also, and it really bothers me. There were numerous large mounds of dirt buried over everywhere. I thought they were somewhere like something dug up from the ground, possibly from burrowing underground someplace. That's unusual. Is it possible that this thing had been burrowing tunnels underneath the ground, making these long elaborate tunnels that it lived in? Maybe something evil lived within them, whatever this creature was. That morning, I got chased out of that camper by whatever it was. Yet, another story to share with you. This one dates back to 2016 when a family goes camping in Colorado. They are stalked by a dogman. Here's their story. My wife and kids were all sitting around the campfire at our campsite. It was roughly about 10 p.m. now. We had already finished cooking and were sitting around the fire, telling stories and just enjoying ourselves. All of us were facing inward looking toward the fire and each other, 
when my daughter had asked me why I was staring off into the woods behind her. At first, I didn't think anything of it. I assumed she would follow my gaze to see what I was looking at, when she did not respond. But instead, she said, Dad, what are you looking at over there? I quickly realized that there must be something standing just outside of the firelight behind her. When I looked back over her shoulder, which is where the rest of my family was seated as well, I believed I saw a large upright canine standing about 30 feet away. It would have been about 7 or 8 feet tall on all fours if it had been standing next to the log that was closest to us, which appeared to be resting. Its fur was long, more of a dark blonde than red. A couple of seconds after, I first focused on it it stood up on two legs and walked out into the center. My sister screamed as I instinctively threw my arm over her and pulled her tightly against me with my left hand, cupping over her mouth so she wouldn't attract its attention with any further screaming. Seeing an unkempt human-looking creature, the body shape and posture of a large man with an animal's head is in fact very terrifying. The face was also very dog-like, but longer, kind of like that of a gray wolf, with the body more similar and akin to that of a silverback gorilla. It was sort of hunched over and ran, stopped and turned its head toward us before disappearing into the thicket. Its fur was a lot more gray than I thought. A lot more gray. We were quiet and still for a few minutes before we both decided to get up and run back to my parents' vehicle. Fortunately, this creature appeared entirely uninterested in us, and which is probably why it didn't pursue us when we ran away. I can only speculate that it lived out here because nobody would hear you scream. The nearest house or cabin was miles away, and at first glance, I thought it was maybe an old man walking through the trees towards me, but I could see how canine it looked. Another thing, its head was also very disproportionately large for its body. It reminded me of a video game or something, but its claws were humongous. The way it was grasping the log, looking back, it's like they probably weren't meant for tearing up deer. They were probably meant for tearing up big prey. We packed up everything very quickly and we headed out of there very fast. I was not going to sit there with my family and waste more time around whatever large creature this was and risk potentially being devoured. I have never heard of Bigfoot being in Wisconsin. I'm pretty well confused about the whole thing, and the first time in my life scared of the forest. I don't think what I'm dealing with, though, is a Bigfoot. This thing looks like a giant wolf. When I killed it, it kind of fell over sideways, like when you shoot a deer in the side, but this thing must have weighed easily 400 pounds. I'm wondering if somebody is trying to beat me out of my chicken coop and wanted something big enough to scare me away. Anyway, let me explain. One night, I'm not sure what time, but I was driving west down the road. This runs along the south side of the Army Ammunitions Plant property. It's just after midnight and I come around a curve about three-fourths a mile past K-13 gate, when suddenly, there are four creatures off to my right, standing in some scrub grass beside the road, maybe ten feet away. They made no noise, but immediately ran across the road into an area of tall weeds on my left shoulder. I would guess at least eight feet high. My first thought was deer, so I slowed down initially, waiting for them to cross back over. When I realized these were giant wolves, they jumped from their hiding place between me and a drainage ditch. I actually ended up running over the first one. I don't think it was dead, but not moving for sure. I fishtailed my car trying to get away from them, and that's when I got stuck in the weeds. I didn't know what was going on until I saw them standing on side of my driver's side, looking at me. They were very tall, covered with hair. I would guess five inches long all over their bodies. They stared at me intently with their deep, glowing eyes. I was convinced they were going to rip me out of the car and tear me to pieces right then and there. Their eyes just stayed lit up, as if they illuminated light. These things, I cannot tell you how sinister they looked. They showed no fear of man. That surprised me. Look, I've got three kids and work for a major bread company. I have no reason to make this up, so you can see how strange this was. Luckily, just as they approached my car, 
a large semi in the oncoming lane began coming, which scared them all off. They looked in the direction of the lights and ran towards the other side of the road. When the semi got close to me, he slowed down, got out and offered me help. We both observed the dead wolf in the center of the road. This one was much smaller than the other ones we were seeing. I'm assuming maybe it was a juvenile or a young one. I don't know. But it was pretty mangled up. I just remember the truck driver giving me his name and information. And we both looked at the corpse saying, What is this thing? But not much else came from that. Easily one of the scariest nights of my life. A witness who wished to remain anonymous claims to have seen a creature that was not native to the area during the mid-evening hours of September 26, 1988. The creature was to reported to have been about five feet tall, bipedal, with gray fur. It also had very long arms with very long claws. It was also very lean in the chest and stomach, but the legs were more leaner. The witness claims that it made a noise similar to an old air raid siren. The story is that a young man who wishes to remain anonymous spotted a strange canine-like creature on Easter Sunday of 1992. He describes it as being between 7 and 9 feet tall, having red eyes and lanky arms, almost reaching the ground. The body is very hairy with heads similar to those of canines. The arms were much thinner and more human-like than those of an ape. There were no apparent hands or claws that he saw. It was also reported as having a very large head with slanted eyes and a jaw that jutted out from the rest of its face. It has also been described as having been extremely powerful looking, which led to it being compared to King Kong by the witness. He stated that it had between half and three-fourths of a mile away from his vantage point, but he was able to see it very clearly with his binoculars. It appeared again at about 9.30 a.m. for about an hour, disappearing behind the foliage. The witness also claims that two other people around the same area saw the creature as well during this time period. One of those claimed to have seen what they described as either a bipedal Bigfoot or a Sasquatch. It was like a Bigfoot, they said, but it had a face like a dog. The third person claimed to have witnessed the canine-like creature as well, who is now deceased. Sightings along Salt Creek have been going on for years leading many residents to believe that there is indeed something strange going on within this small, rural community in Ohio. This was in Pennsylvania, 55 miles south of Pittsburgh, December 26, 1991. Three motorists had more than a traffic stop on their minds when they reported seeing what appeared to be the legendary werewolf, all along Route 40, west of town, Wednesday afternoon. Two women and a man phoned state police at Union Township early Thursday to report the creature about 4 p.m., just west of Route 21 in Guysville. According to Trooper Thomas Epler, who took the call from the woman, the motorist said it was a dark gray, lupine-like figure, about seven feet tall with a powerful build. They all gave the same description, Epler said Thursday night, adding that they were shaken by the encounter. The one lady was getting off Route 21 and saw it down in a field on her side of the road, in Guysville, he said. She slowed up to get a better look. The woman told police she saw what appeared to be a big dog or wolf standing on its hind legs, munching on something dead. Then, walk on two legs into a wooded area near some railroad tracks, completely visible. She described its gait as very stiff and awkward once it left the field and headed towards the woods along Route 40. Moments later, the woman told police she came upon a car parked along Route 40 and a man standing next to it, talking on a cell phone. He was obviously shaken, told her that he had just called state police about seeing the beast himself moments earlier in the same location, Epler said. The trooper, who was not aware of that report, then took a call from another woman, asking if anything had been found in the area. She gave me a similar description, Epler said, the second caller's account. She reported seeing an apparent dog or wolf running across Route 40 from Guysville toward Uniontown as they drove west toward town Wednesday afternoon near Sheets Convenience Store at Route 21 and Route 40. She said it looked like a big dog or wolf with thick, shaggy, hairy fur. Epler said 
of the second report that he received from a woman early Thursday morning. He said both the women described seeing an animal, about seven to eight feet tall, walking on its hind legs as it walked through a small field west of Route 40 and Sheets store toward Uniontown along Guysville Road. Both ladies were very nervous and concerned, Hepler said, adding that police had no idea what they were dealing with Wednesday night, since no tracks were found in the area where witnesses saw a large gray creature on two legs near railroad tracks off of Route 40, just outside the city limits of Union on Wednesday afternoon, right around 4 p.m. While it may turn out to be some type of prank, Epler said, police were taking the calls very seriously and had no idea what they were dealing with without any physical evidence such as tracks or droppings of the scene. We received a report last year on this date about hunters seeing something similar in the same area. But we had nothing here today. Epler said the first caller estimated the creature stood seven feet tall and was munching on a dead deer carcass on Wednesday afternoon when she first spotted it on her westbound side of the route, 40, just past the sheet store near an overpass for Interstate 70, which again is adjacent to Route 40, outside of Uniontown city limits, off of Guysville Road. Epler noted that there was one apparent set of tracks found near where the second woman had reported an animal crossing Route 40 Wednesday afternoon, just outside the city limits, but they were very indistinct and unconfirmed by police who had no idea what type of tracks they were dealing with. The trooper said the second woman told him that she returned home from work late Wednesday night and found her yard torn up, as if something large had been thrashing around it. We have no idea what made those tracks, adding that investigators would be checking local scrapyards for any recent purchases of metal bear traps to see if they might have a clue about who or what it was. People are telling us this one weird deal, Epler said noting that there were no dead deer in the area where witnesses said something was feasting on its remains. To this day, it still remains a mystery. I was walking down the road in my town. I live on a corner, so there's two main roads leading to my house. One that faces west, and another that faces south. Well, it was fall in late October, probably around 4 or 5 at night. I had just got off work, and figured I would walk home rather than sit around for an hour waiting for the bus when I could be walking instead. After all, it's a much healthier alternative. It isn't too far from work to home, which is about three quarters of a mile, maybe, but it can still make you sweaty, especially in the heat. Anyway, back to the story. I was approaching this particular intersection when I saw something weird out of my peripherals running along the tree line behind two houses across the street from mine. I didn't think much of it at first. I just thought it was some random person, but as soon as my brain registered the fact that it wasn't human, fear punched me in the chest and mind simultaneously. It ran on all fours, but its posture was hunched back, like a hyena or a dog. Only the arms were longer than the hind legs. The shoulders were hunched very high up near its ears with long gangly arms, kind of dragging against the ground, even though they seemed to be extending all the way down to its toes. Its head looked practically horizontal compared to most animals, if not more so, considering it had a large snout. Its fur was very white, all over, except for certain areas which displayed grays ranging from white to tan. After it passed by the last house with a tree blocking my full view, it stopped, turned its head to look at my direction, or more accurately, I should say it. There was no actual face I could clearly see. Just black empty space. This is all I managed to get out of myself before fear dragged me into full-blown panic and took off running for my life up the road leading northward, away from this beast. I didn't want to leave the main road, so I decided to take a shortcut through somebody's yard, who had several pine trees in their backyard which were not visible from either the sidewalk or the street. They didn't pose much threat, as far as lack of visibility went. As soon as I was in the yard, and safe from the beast's view, I turned around to see if it had decided to want to chase me. What I saw can only be described as a nightmare. It was maybe 50 feet behind me, just standing there, looking at me, with the same empty stare. In hindsight, I know it couldn't have been much taller than maybe 6 feet. But when you feel you're being hunted by a creature of nightmares... What you see is not always what is real. 
Now I'm running again at this point. Fear has kicked my survival instincts into overdrive, and I'm sprinting through the backyard trying to find some way out of the situation. Frantic. Anything, even an electric fence would do. Well, wouldn't you know it? But they don't have one, so I'm still trapped. In a moment of pure, unadulterated desperation, I start climbing the first pine tree that isn't too far from me. Pine trees have always been my favorite kind of tree to climb as a kid, and so this made it easy for me. I get about halfway up, and I hear something crashing through the underbrush, coming closer. As it got louder and louder, I saw about 30 feet below me, it just standing there, staring up at me again, with these large black eyes, like it was waiting for me to come down, slowly tilting its head downwards, looking back up at me. It's like its eyes were piercing into my soul like daggers into a heart. I did not come down to that tree for more than 20 minutes. It did eventually leave, but it felt like I was stuck up there for an eternity. I don't know if this thing just got bored of me or what, but it's not like I stayed up there looking down at it. I took my view off of it and just prayed and prayed and prayed, hoping, wishing it would leave. I looked down eventually and it was gone. I don't know if it was going to pounce on me the second I got down there or what. Maybe it was a trap. Maybe it was waiting for me. I had to go down eventually. And at this point, I absolutely had to get home somehow. Even though it meant running past the beast again, I couldn't stay up in this tree forever. Eventually, I was going to have to come down sometime and face my fears head on, like a man. The only problem is there were no branches lower than five feet from the ground, except for the run right next to me but it looked too weak and brittle with sharp edges, which would make getting down very difficult to do safely. Right when I decided to climb back down was my best option. Another pine cone fell from above, nearly hitting me in the head. After hanging out here for about another hour and making sure the beast was not around, I convinced myself to climb back down, running fast back to home as fast as my legs could carry me which was quite a speed considering I hadn't run that fast since middle school gym class. I got home and was safe and sound, immediately locking every door and window I had. Now it's been several months since this encounter, but every once in a while when I walk through the forest alone at night, or even take a shortcut through somebody's backyard, I could still see those empty black eyes staring back at me from somewhere in the trees. At first they spooked me, but now it's like they're a part of my daily nightmares. They're just something that will forever haunt my soul. I'm fairly certain this was either a werewolf or a skinwalker. I was driving on a country road at night with my mother past an intersection near some fields. The field had a very faint path cut through by a fence post, and as I looked out in the window, I saw something from the corner of my eye go from those posts to the right towards another dirt road more or less parallel with ours. It was roughly seven feet tall and lanky, but moved very fast for its size without giving off any sound. Its movements were smooth but yet stiff at the same time, like somebody dancing who didn't quite know how to move their body properly. It definitely was not limber. It was too dark for me to see all the details well enough, and I couldn't make out anything very specific. And it happened so quickly. I am certain that it wasn't human, nor the classic lumbering man-wolf description of some Bigfoot sightings. I told my mother, but she didn't believe me until I showed her the route it took on our map near our route moments after it happened. She drove down that road herself, found only the small dirt track perpendicular to ours, along with another similar track leading off into an area of older cornfields, which is where I saw this thing start out from. We were the only car around for miles, and this thing was running pretty fast so it had to have crossed both our paths to get where I saw it go. I don't know what this was or if this could have even been considered a cryptid sighting, since we didn't see anything really other than its movement. But it's one of those things you don't forget. It was not a human, and it was not an ape or monkey either, as far as I'm concerned. All that said, though, I'm not convinced either way whether such creatures exist or not. There is little material out there that goes beyond just telling stories about them and making up flimsy theories based on bad math and wishful thinking. Maybe something like a skinwalker or a werewolf really does exist, but that's not enough. We need specific data, 
and more reliable eyewitness accounts from multiple sources before we can make any real progress on the matter. Until then, this was just an interesting, if brief encounter with something unknown in the darkness to add to my very short list of experiences other than spooky noises and shadows. I was traveling southbound on I-25 around midnight, and I saw something which stood up in front of me. It was very dark, and due to my high beams, I could see it pretty clearly. There were no other cars at the time. The thing looked like an ape and a canine made a baby, and it had very large teeth and kind of green glowing eyes. Its hands did not look human or animal either for that matter, just long claws and, if I was to place a description for the hands, they reminded me of raccoon hands. That's all I really remember about it before it ran off into the woods, along the side of the road over a ditch. As my car got closer to it, it evaded. This was one of the scariest things I've ever seen in my life. This happened at the entrance of the campgrounds at the Bosque del Apache Wildlife Refuge. There were skid marks and mud, where whatever spilled seemed recently abandoned by whatever creature had dropped it while running from us. There was also a man, a traveler, who lived all of his life until death in solitude. His only connection with other humans was through an old post office box chained to a metal pole just outside of town. This one, I'm going to say, is a little harder to swallow, but I know what I saw. It also happened back in 2014 in the winter, when myself and three other friends were out camping in a spot we knew from fishing trips. We were camping in a spot south of Reed Point, about 10 miles off of 287 South, on the edge of Blacktail Creek Wildlife Refuge. The sun had gone down earlier that evening, and we're sitting around a fire, listening to music and drinking beer, and one of my buddies was going to bed in his tent. Another friend went over to help him get situated, because it was pretty cold outside. So after another beer or two, I decided it would be a good idea for me to try and get some sleep as well. We all heard some strange screeching that night that my friend claims was the howling of a werewolf. Nothing really much happened beyond that, but it's still pretty terrifying. I got a couple of things for you. People have often noticed odd things while driving on some of the New Mexico's interstates. But there are three specific stretches of road where the strangeness just seems to be far more prevalent than others. I don't know if it was a werewolf or not, but I do remember being in the passenger seat of my friend's car on his way home from work at about 3 in the morning, since we carpooled often. We were heading westbound on I-40, approaching the Wagon Mount exit, and we both saw something standing next to a tree alongside the interstate. The creature seemed to be staring at us, and began growling and barking like a dog would. However, although its face looked canine, it looked distorted and was standing upright the way a man would. It also had a very lanky body. It was very strange. I'm not sure if that's what a werewolf is, but my friend and I definitely know what we saw. Also, I was in my family house in 2011 with my brother, and we heard a noise in the backyard of our two-story house. We didn't think much about it until we went outside and spotted something black running up the hillside in the distance. My dad and I tried to follow it but lost sight of it just before it got out of our view. It looked very similar to a very large dog, except for its hair was longer and its long pointed ears made me think it wasn't just a big dog after all. The next day, we found weird canine tracks all the way around our back property, leading down to the small creek and up the hill where we saw it the night before. It was pretty creepy. While I'm mountain biking through very thick timberline, I looked down and saw an area where somebody had made a fire, so I went over to it, got off my bike and started looking at the ashes, when suddenly, I heard crackling brush about 50 yards away from me. It sounded like something was coming straight towards me through the brush. When I turned around, all I could see was black fur sticking out of the brush until whatever it was emerged from between two trees, then taking off, running into the forest again. I'm 6'3". This thing was huge, blackish gray with long shaggy hair. Looked like it could have been on its hind legs, but only for a few seconds. It must have followed me to my bike. When I turned around, there it was, standing to me, growling 
before taking off again. This is the second time something like this has happened to me in all these years of writing here. I don't believe in werewolves, but this thing looked just like one. It was terrifying. I do believe they exist now, and I'm not going back there ever again. The only thing I can come up with is that I potentially was on its territory, and it did not like that. I've been a long-time hiker and outdoors type person. I've done it all. I've seen it all, too. With the exception of a couple of strange sightings that I've had over the years, I'll tell you about them. On the first Saturday of September, I went out on a solo hike in what is probably my favorite place to go hiking. Cave Run State Park, located just outside of Moorhead, Kentucky. It's about 25 miles from Lexington, and it's quite popular with outdoor people. The scenery is serene and beautiful. Every year during Labor Day weekend, there are several large gatherings of outdoor people who camp out there for the weekend at the same park. And since it was the last full weekend of summer, according to my calendar, I thought it would be fun to see what all these outdoorsy types were up to. As I hiked along one of the trails that goes around part of this big lake, I noticed some folks gather near the water, further down the trail where they had some spread out like picnic blankets and were eating lunch. Some of the people had already changed into their swimming apparel, heading down towards the water to take a swim in the lake, with most of them jumping off one of those big rock cliffs that are located right along the shore. After I hiked for a while longer, I decided it would be nice to go for a swim myself. So I climbed up onto the trail, put my wallet and other items in a waterproof baggie, took off my clothes down to my bathing suit. The first thing I did was go over to the water's edge, where all these folks were gathered, enjoying themselves splashing each other with water, or sitting around just chit-chatting. Just as I was about to jump off this big cliff into the water, I heard a thump right behind me. I turned around to see what it was. There, not more than 40 feet from me, were two very large creatures standing there on the trail. Our eyes met, and they both started kind of hollering at each other, making some strange clicking noises. I don't know if you've ever seen a real-life living werewolf before, but these things played the part very well. I just reacted. I jumped off the small cliff into the water below. Assuming they had followed behind me, I turned and they weren't there when I surfaced. So I quickly swam to the nearest shore, which happened to be just past these folks who were picnicking. When I started out from that direction, both of those things too, I can hear them up there, up on the cliffside yelping and making these strange howling noises. This got the attention of everybody around me. Now people were concerned and looking up, and I fled back to the trail where I originally came from, and I tried to stay low to the ground, hiding behind the trees and dodging as best I could. Surprisingly, they didn't jump in after me, like they still wanted to remain hidden of some kind. It was very strange how they just appeared there. I don't know if they were trying to communicate to me or what, they didn't seem incredibly aggressive, but I instantly felt fear and dread. Like, had I not jumped off the cliff, had I not reacted, they would have torn me to pieces. Even in the distance, I could still hear them yapping and howling and clicking. And a bunch of people who were just casually hanging out were all pointing and hearing these sounds, trying to talk amongst themselves and wonder what it was. I'm not the only one who's had this sighting. There are many other hikers around here. In fact, some are even my friends who have reported strange, well, werewolf-like looking creatures that live in these woods that will sometimes surprise hikers. There have even been hikers who have actually been physically assaulted and attacked, one man having nearly lost his arm, while another was blinded, having this thing torn out his eye. Of course, we all know that a lot of this stuff is heavily covered up, so you probably won't hear about it, and don't expect to find much online. They don't allow that much information to get out. Bad PR is bad PR. Parks won't handle that. But I'm sure you're wanting probably more of a fair description of what I saw. It's really hard for me to, because I'll be as clear and plain as day with you. If you've ever seen a werewolf from a movie, this fit the description. It was like a werewolf movie, but in real life. This eyewitness reports seeing several large bipedal canine figures hiding in the stalks of corn, crouching down near the creek bed before being flushed out by a shock-and-wielding farmer. The story goes like this. 
I was driving home from my job at 11 p.m. I got off work at 10, so this was about an hour-long drive. I'm driving down a gravel road to my house. Something runs across the road in front of me. It seemed to be kind of hunched or crouched over, moving very fast across the road. The only way I could describe it is a monster. That's all I can really say for certain. It happened so quickly and there wasn't near enough light outside. The moon had not yet risen and it was on a curve. I stopped, looked back towards where it went to the cornfield across the street, but did not see anything. As I continued up to my house, I passed by a neighbor who was outside and asked if everything was okay. He said that he had been chasing a pack of wild dogs up and down the road all day. I thought maybe this is what I saw, but it's way too fast to be a dog. I didn't think much of it. I went inside and was getting ready to take a shower, when from my own bedroom window, facing across the street, I see at least four figures come out of the cornfield by my neighbor's house. They were standing in a row, along the edge of the woods, just past his yard, looking around intensely for several seconds. Then, one took off in the woods, followed by another, then another, then the last one came out of the field, looked around, until finally breaking into a run, following the others. They were moving on two legs, seemed to be very tall, well over seven or eight feet. It had been a warm day, but it was also cold outside that night, probably only about 40 degrees. I don't normally lock my doors, but after seeing this, I went out of my way and locked them. I told my girlfriend what had happened. She didn't seem too concerned until I noticed her looking at one of our front windows behind me. She said, what is he doing over there? There was a man in my farmer's field across the street from my house, carrying a shotgun up towards where we saw those figures lost at the edge of the woods near his house. He walked back down into one of his fields, carrying the gun like he was tracking something. We saw him walk down into his field, walk back up with nothing in his hands, looking around the edge of the woods again, then back into his house through the front door. I've tried to do some online research about wild dogs, but I didn't find anything. I even googled Bigfoot sightings in this area, but there are really none. Just when I think I have an answer for what we saw, it leaves me more confused than ever. When asked if there were any other witnesses to the events described in this report, she said no one else had been home at the other time, though her neighbors mentioned seeing several wild dogs roaming in their fields throughout the day. The location is in Greene County, Illinois, in a town called White Heath. It was a bad snowstorm. I was driving to work around 5 a.m., maybe four miles from where I work. The area is very rural, so there's lots of trees and open fields next to the road. There are three or four other roads close by that connect at different parts where this happened, but they're all pretty much isolated. At first, I saw the eyes reflecting off my car towards the woods, right across the road. Then, I could see them coming closer up above a rise in the middle of the field. They were glowing red, maybe purple, and big enough for me to notice them all the way out there. As soon as I saw them, I knew it was not something normal. They kind of reminded me of deer eyes, except being red. But no deer has eyes or should have lighted up like this, not without having light shown in them. I slowed down from about 45 to around 25, and now they were running right along with me. I thought a deer had gotten caught in the headlights, but it was seeing the eyes way out there in my car wasn't really slowing down all that much. As soon as they came closer to me, I saw this was a big dark figure on two legs, trying to run beside my car for about five seconds before I got close enough for it to jump back towards the woods, away from the road. It appeared to have a hairy body of some large animal, and bigger than any bear or man. This was not a human at all, even though it walked like one. It jumped from where I was driving, and ran way faster than any human could through the thick snow in a field towards some older farm buildings. I considered for a second stopping to see if it had some kind of injury or anything, but decided against it once I realized what had just happened, seeing how it didn't look human and knowing the area is very isolated on three sides, with virtually no traffic at this time of day. I did not get a good look at its face, only the red eyes that were looking right into my car, judging by where they were pointing. 
When you have rare things happen to people, they want to tell somebody about it, even though most people won't believe them. So most stories you hear talk about a friend or something like that, which was me in this case since I don't know who's reading this. I decided to put this on here. It seemed like some people are more open-minded about things like this than others. Oh well. A year or so ago, I was working for a transport company, delivering food to grocery stores. I usually worked alone, but this particular day, another driver joined me in the truck. It was around 7 p.m. We were driving down an old abandoned road next to a forest. We drove past an old bridge where several people had committed suicide, unfortunately, by jumping off, so the authorities put up fences on either side of it to stop people from trying to take their own life. As we got closer to the bridge, I saw something standing near the fence. It turned out to be a well-built man with black greasy hair, only wearing ordinary clothes, or so what it appeared to be at first. No ordinary person would walk outside like that in sub-zero temperatures. It looked at us, and when it did, we saw that this was not a person, but a large, hairy, bulky man with the face of a Doberman pincher. It quickly ran behind the fence before we could see where it went. The tree is blocking our view. I said to my partner, Did you just see that? He replied, saying that that was weird. There are no houses around here, and he didn't think anybody lived in the forest either. Maybe it was some homeless person. We didn't know. We continued on our route to deliver the food. On the way back, however, something followed us down the same road. It looked like a long-haired slender man running after us faster than any human should be able to. My driver slammed his foot onto the gas pedal until we got back to town. The last look I got out of it was the rearview mirror, and it looked like a very, very skinny, almost starving upright wolf. What baffles me is finding out that there are werewolves around me, but never thought they would stalk me down in an old abandoned street. I was on my four-wheeler, headed back to the house, past my grandfather's old farm. This was on a little four-track road, and about midway up, there's a barbed wire fence pasture on the right side, with tree coverage on the left. I was riding up this road, got about halfway when I saw something standing by one of the trees. It appeared to be a big black dog, bigger than anything I had ever seen in my life. Its head was about two feet or so above the trees, and it saw me when I saw it. I'm not sure if it wanted to attack or what, but when I hit the gas on my four-wheeler, this thing took off off the hill, across the fence, through the barbed wire, into that pasture, and it went very fast. Now, there were no houses for miles at first glance. There is nothing that could explain what I saw, besides, quite simply, just a really big, large black dog. That is, until you get closer to the pasture, all along where this thing ran, at least 8 to 10 feet long tracks from front legs, claws, and hind legs, claws, almost side by side down both sides of tracks, you could see where the grass was beat down, and there were pieces of wood from the barbed wire that were snapped. On some of these pieces of wood, there were deep gouge marks into them, where it had balled up its feet to get over the fence. I went back a couple of days later with some pictures and molds, but found nothing except for a print in one of the trees, where it was standing about three feet wide. Also, there was bark missing all around it. This thing had scared me so bad, I did not even think to take my camera out until it took off running. I wish now that I would try to have gotten a picture of it, at least one. But of course my cell phone was dead. I had been taking pictures with it earlier in the day on that spot, but of course missed my golden opportunity. First off, a little bit of background info on me. I'm not a guy that gets scared very easily. I looked into the whole Dogman and Bigfoot thing before and after this encounter, and while I thought it was strange, I wasn't necessarily curious. That being said, here's my experience. I was hiking slash hunting with my three family members, west of the Chillicothe in Ross County. Google Maps shows the location is 20 miles east of the highway, near the pines. 
an upscale housing development which sits directly south of us at the time of writing this, May 2013. This area is pretty secluded, but still has some nearby housing development along Highway 50. This day began like any other hunting trip does for me. Up at 5 a.m. to get ready before taking off at 5.30 with a partner. In this case, my father. We drove up to the area and started hiking just east of where we parked our truck, which was on a small access road near an old strip mine site. At about 10 a.m., we were walking down a ridge when all of a sudden, I noticed something big moving around in some brush off to my right, or the west. As soon as I realized what it was, I came to a near halt, leveled my rifle while calling out, BEAR! Seeing the dogman running through the woods startled me so much, I nearly shot at it. My father looked in his direction, but didn't see anything initially. He was looking too low. He then saw it for a few seconds, and in a calm voice said, uh-oh, and immediately took off back to the truck. My adrenaline was pumping pretty crazy, driving me forward while I moved my rifle around frantically looking for it. I was going to blow this thing's brains out. It had initially appeared about 80 yards away, but was long gone by the time we turned to look again. I'm a pretty lanky guy, six foot tall, long legs, roughly two feet arm span, 220 pounds, my dad is 5'11", 210. The dogman was bigger than either of us, roughly 9 or 10 feet tall, maybe around 500 pounds, based on its mass and stride, easily big enough that neither one of us could have put our arms around its chest. Its fur was a dark brown, kind of a smoky charcoal color, and it had a very human-like face, with no snout though, or a very short snout I should say, ears that were sharper and bigger than any dog I've ever seen and standing about three feet taller on its rear legs than on all fours, since it did at one point run on all fours, where when it decided to stop and walk on the rest of the two, it was roughly around nine to ten feet tall. We judged and estimated by where it had walked by. The tree branch where it almost hit was about nine and a half feet off the ground. This sighting lasted for roughly six seconds at absolute most. After the initial encounter, we did not see it again, this is not something that anybody could easily mistake for another animal or person. It stood up like a Bigfoot does in nearly everything, with knees straight, without bending over, no hocks in its legs like a dog or anything. It was entirely human, from shoulder down to foot. Even its movements were smooth, as it coasted and glided along the forest floor, calmly and easily transitioning between speeds when it needed to, running from tree to tree, low to the ground, its forward speed seemed almost comparable to a bear, but as it moved higher up the trees and began to run along branches and trunks, its speed increased until it was moving almost as quickly as you would expect a deer to move. I've been hunting since I was nine. I'm 47 now. I looked up every cougar call and sound I could find. Nothing comes even remotely close to what I heard. I'm not scared of anything in the woods, but... I know we're not supposed to have blackish-gray, six-foot-tall wolves here in this county in Wisconsin. I'm pretty confused about the whole thing, and for the first time in my life, I'm actually scared. A bizarre story came over our news desk this week involving a couple of men walking down Monroe Street in northern Greenbrush. When they say something dashed out onto the road in front of them, it would have been easier if they had seen what it was clearly, but all three described it as basically as fast as a moving large dog. So fast moving that two of the men said it was nothing they'd ever seen before. I now live in Arizona. My husband and I were going camping a week ago around midnight. We were heading out to our spot when my husband says, look at that big dog. It looked like a coyote, but was very, very large. I pulled my gun on him, but he ran off into the bushes. And I feel bad for now for not shooting him. I also saw something very weird back in 1987. It was Sunday, November 10th. I remember. I went out with some friends to watch football games outside one of their houses near Brownsville, Texas. There is nothing behind this house except woods, so nobody else is out there. It was about 2 p.m. Sunny skies out. Everywhere, no wind at all. We were sitting outside talking for a couple of hours. 
I decided to go inside. It had gotten cold out since the sun was blocked by the house. I went back outside like 30 minutes later. The sky had now become cloudy and gray, full of overcast. Even though there wasn't any clouds out before, it had begun going really dark like it had gone sunset or something. But that doesn't happen this early around here, unless there's a storm coming. I look up in the sky westward, where I used to see planes flying over before Little League baseball games on Saturdays, and I saw something odd. It was a shape, but it looked bigger than any other plane I've seen. It had to at least be twice as big as the biggest plane that fly over the house, but then I realized it wasn't moving like a normal plane does. You usually don't really see planes because they're too high up in the sky, and you can't hear them when there's no wind. But this was pretty loud, and it sounded like a loud screeching noise. Well, we were all staring at this thing, wondering what it was when it flew off, ever so closer overhead, and we could tell what it was better. We realized this thing was probably a UFO. We had never seen one like this before, but it was bizarre. And after that, all these strange sightings of strange upright canines started happening all around where we lived. Of course, this was back in 1987, and shortly after all of that commotion, it kind of died down. Even in my ripe age of 47, I still remember a lot of this happening. My grandfather passed away when I was in middle school. My grandmother lived on her own until she died when I was in college. She had a few acres back behind her house. This ended at a creek where there were some woods, but the property became pretty desolate toward the end of her life. She could no longer walk well. One day when I was in high school, she was still alive. I remember this because it happened in the summer before my junior year of high school. Me and a friend whose family also lived nearby went to go visit her. We knocked on the door. Nobody answered. So we walked around back to see if maybe she had fallen or something. Once we got close to the front of her garage, I saw through the window and stopped dead in the tracks like something had caught our attention. I looked across the creek into the woods where this thing was staring and I didn't see anything at first and I noticed a big black figure moving quickly on two legs from the creek towards her house. It wasn't all that far away so it did not take us long to notice something was definitely weird about this person or whatever it was. They just seemed really big. We were young teenagers. We were pretty scared. Partly of what it might be and partly because if our parents found out, we'd be wandering around Grandma's property late at night, without permission, there would have been major repercussions. We ran back through the field behind her property into my friend's yard, told his mom what we saw. Now, my dad is a retired biology teacher, and he's always been really into animals. So growing up, I learned a lot just from him. Every once in a while, we would talk about Bigfoot-type creatures, because he knew that I was into cryptids, and ultimately cryptozoology. We had never heard of the skunk ape before, and it was not something he had ever mentioned to me. But one day, we were driving down the dirt road near our house, and we both saw what looked like a Bigfoot run across the road, out of our sight behind some trees. Although, it had a snout, so I'm not sure if Bigfoots have that. It seemed way too large to be a person, or even a bear, hence the snout, which is why initially we thought it was a bear. The thing that made us fairly certain it wasn't either of those things is that it kind of ran on all fours, which again is very odd for those two things to do. So, my dad asked me what I thought it was. I told him I never heard of a skunk ape before, but now that he mentioned it, that's definitely kind of what it looked like. It did look somewhat apish, like if you took a man, put him in a ghillie suit, covered him in thick hair, and then kind of maybe, I don't know, gave him a werewolf mask. That's kind of the idea, except now make it run on all fours and make it as large as a bear, and only see it for roughly five seconds. Now you kind of have a good idea of what we saw. I do remember it left behind a very bad lingering odor, one that was incredibly musty and had a really bad kind of wet dog stink to it. Anyway, we decided to ask a few other people in our area if they knew or had any stories or knew anything about skunk apes. Almost everybody we talked to had said they had seen something similar at some point in their life, within the middle of nowhere. It turns out that there are a ton of sightings in our house, and all up the Gulf Coast, from Mississippi through Florida. 
This is another story from when I was little. I am from northern Alabama originally. One summer evening, while playing on the swing set in our backyard, my brother and I noticed a large man walking around in the woods behind our house. We didn't think much about it because we assumed he was probably just hunting or something, and we could not really see him that well. Later that evening, while I was getting ready to go to bed, I looked out my bedroom window. It faced the woods and saw what looked like some sort of big, dark, hairy creature standing by a large oak tree, looking right through me at my window. My little six, seven-year-old mind was freaking out pretty bad, so I ran into my parents' room, told them what I'd seen. One of them got up to go check on it. I don't remember which one. They never saw anything, though, of course, when they went looking for it. They assumed it was my imagination. All of our neighbors have told us that when they were kids... Their parents would always warn them about large creatures in the woods and tell them to stay away after dark. Of course, those could just be wives' tales. We still don't really know what they are or where they come from. I'm positive that these kinds of things exist. There's no way you could see something that much at close range without knowing for sure it is not a person of some kind of weird costume. Another story. I saw this weird creature while deer hunting late one afternoon in late fall. This was November near King, Arkansas. It was about three o'clock. The sun had gone down behind the tree line, making visibility poor at best. I was hunting with my father, and we had been out deer hunting as long as we could in the stand. We never saw a deer, but we were always having fun. We were hiking back to the four-wheeler when we heard crackling in the leaves, roughly 40 yards away. My first thought, deer. Then I realized there was no way it could have been a deer. They don't make noise when they walk through leaves in the ground. We both froze, slowly started sneaking up towards where the sound was coming from, expecting to find a large buck standing broadside and getting ready to snag our trophy. As soon as I started moving, whatever it was must have known that we were there. It turned and started walking on two legs down the creek. I couldn't tell you exactly what it was, but whatever it was, must have been over seven feet. That's how tall the trees were around us. I didn't see a face or hear any sounds until my dad pulled the trigger. It turned out to be a large, upright kind of dog. We have no way to account for what we saw that day. And even now, my dad is still a biology major. That whole thing still freaks him out. Between what we saw that day of it running across the road, the smell, the large, upright canine that we saw, none of it makes sense to him. But he just believes what he knows what science teaches him. While he has a hard time acknowledging what we saw, I don't think he ever will. On a summer day in 2017, a hiker was hiking the trails in Stinchcomb Wildlife Refuge in Oklahoma City. It was right around dusk, and he saw a large dark creature that ran across the trail into the brush about 10 feet from him. The creature stood up on two legs as it jumped thoroughly into the brush appearing to have been well over six feet tall. The hiker decided against investigating after seeing this strange, frightening creature. The following day, a man who had lived near the wildlife refuge heard a strange howling that didn't quite sound like a wolf coming from his backyard. He described it as being too unnaturally deep and loud for it to be a proper animal of its size. He said it lasted for about five minutes before stopping abruptly. I have lived here my whole life. 26 years. And I'm telling you, there's something out there. Whatever it is, it's lingering and waiting. I was camping one night, about 15 miles east of the bluffs in southern Missouri, with my cousin and my dog. It was just past midnight, and I heard a large rustling coming from our left side, aka north. When I turned to look at what the noise was, it sounded like footsteps, biped footsteps much larger and heavier than any man or animal either of us have ever heard. We sit up on our elbows, trying to see what was making this godful sound. We are both country boys. We know how sounds travel through the hills and brush around here. The thing made quite a bit of noise as it came out into this very small area, in front of us in the clearing. All three of our heads turn in unison to look at it. My cousin is six foot, I am five ten. This thing was easily 9 to 10 feet tall, if not larger. I mean, we're talking mammoth size. It looked kind of like a dark gray gorilla, but had a horrible wolf face. 
very long arms, huge claws on its hand, and almost what I would describe as spines sticking at its back. It kind of reminded me of a dinosaur or something, although with the head being more wolf-like. It had deep set in black eyes, and the creature's skull seemed to be very sharp, as if parts of the face, the flesh was wrapped tightly around the skull, so the features were sharper, with a massive brow ridge. I couldn't see really much ears, although it did have these very slender perky things on top of its head, which I assumed were the ears. And then it howled. Thankfully, it did not seem to notice us, but when it let out this howl, it was like a nightmare come to life. It didn't sound like a wolf. It sounded like a combination of all different kinds of animals screaming at the same time, which is kind of why we thought werewolf, despite its horrible nightmarish appearance. The scariest part, though, was easily the head and face, and just how frightening this thing looked overall. There's nothing normal about it. Nothing in nature should look like this thing did. I know I will certainly never forget it. We were trying to do some serious camping out of the Pine Barrens. Yes, the same place the mysterious Jersey Devil is said to reside. While I don't believe we heard the Jersey Devil, we definitely heard something that made our blood run cold. We had been in our camp spot for about two or three days by this point. Things were going very well. We had a high-end camp stove going, bug spray, food galore. Enough beer to last us for days. It was late night, maybe two in the morning, and we heard the sound coming from the other side in the forest. It sounded like this deep, guttural, earthly wolf sound. It was a howling noise, but it lasted for over 20 seconds and was very deep. I have never heard anything quite like that before. I would say that there are no animals around that can make these types of sounds with their vocal cords. The closest thing of what I could think of is like imagine a wolf and then distort it by playing it through a tape recorder. Now make it sound much more demonic with a lot more noise and power. Keep in mind, I've been camping out here for years, never seeing anything or hearing anything about the Jersey Devil physically. And then I hear this. Very unusual and pretty scary. Needless to say, we did not go back there and camp after that incident. This happened in April of 2015, when I was about to turn 16. I was spending the night at my friend John's house, and we were just hanging out downstairs, playing guitar here and such. It was around 11.30pm, when we decided to go up to his room. We turned off all the lights downstairs, closed the door, we did not want to be disturbed by the rest of the night by his little sister, who usually wakes up around 3 or 4 in the morning. His room is on the second floor, overlooking the backyard. Now, his backyard is surrounded by forest and has been vacant for well over 20 to 30 years, after a small housing development was built with plans to expand in the future, but has been sitting there, vacant. As you can tell by the name of the street, this never happened. The forest is overgrown and overtaken this small development. Small birch and oak trees, weeds, vines, ferns, berry bramble, and other forest plants. It's very hard to walk through the ground, so it's barely been explored by anybody except as kids, who occasionally go out there and play, in spite of warnings that it's dangerous, due to the fact that apparently people have gone missing around here. John's house is also walking distance from mine, so I'm usually over at his place every day after school. We go to my house and do things like play video games and hang out with our friends. Around one in the morning, we are lying on his bed, and I heard a noise outside of his window. It makes a creak every time opened. We both sat up, looked at the window from where we were laying down. It was nearly completely pitch black outside, except for a few faint streetlights and a barely lit backyard foliage. The noise had startled me. It sounded very familiar, like somebody walking on dry leaves or sticks, after it had rained and they were crushed. It was also very close to the window. It sounded like whoever or whatever was outside might have been right below his window. We both sat there silently, hoping that would not hear another sound so maybe we could relax a little bit. I remember the wind blowing really hard. John's house shakes when it's windy outside. It's old. We kept silent for a few moments, hoping to hear nothing more than the sound of the wind. Then... We heard what sounded like noise from outside. It was so loud, 
It sounded like growling, like some large animals out there, hungry, wanting to eat us. We both ran to the other side of John's room as fast as we could, still very close to the window, so whatever it was would not see us. I remember standing against the wall in a corner with John, staring at his bedroom door, quietly waiting for whatever it was outside of his window to get inside. I don't know how long we were standing there, but it felt like hours until the noise finally ceased. I was very relieved that whatever had been making that noise outside John's window happened to stop, but also terrified at what we thought might have caused it, as if the feeling of not knowing was out there wasn't scary enough. The fact that it had been making all this terrible noise like growling made me think it might be something evil and dangerous. John starts walking toward his window while I'm standing there in the corner, trying not to seem scared, so he wouldn't know about my terror of whatever had been outside. He walks over, slowly opens his window so he could look outside to see if there was anything unusual in his backyard. I noticed at this point the wind had stopped blowing. The trees were not moving at all. It was strangely very still. John looks out his window for what seemed like an eternity, slowly closes it, and without saying a word, turning around to say anything to me. It was then that I knew there was something evil out there that had found us. John slowly walked towards me, pale as a sheet. I asked him if everything was alright in a whisper, and he very nervously whispered no, staring at me with the look of terror on his face that I'd never seen him wear before. And we both stood there, before he motioned for me to come see, not moving or really saying much of anything. The expression of fear is really hard to describe. We eventually started walking towards his window again. I followed him, and he pointed to me, without answering, slowly trying to be as quiet as he can while opening the window, and trying not to make any noise, just waiting for something to happen. I remember the moments that followed it, as if it were something out of a horror movie. We heard what sounded like branches breaking in the backyard, and he pointed to the large black shadow hidden under the canopy of trees in the far back corner of the yard that you could just barely make out if it weren't for all the faint moonlight. My stomach dropped when I saw it, and I'm getting goosebumps just writing it, forcing myself to remember this nightmare. This, dare I say, werewolf-looking thing standing there in the dark, staying perfectly still like a statue, I saw it immediately ducking down, freaking out. What is that thing? I asked him. And this creature was standing next to a large bramble bush, which had now started moving towards the house. John freaked, slamming the window shut, jumped down with me, wondering what we should do. We run into the kitchen, grab knives, and run back into the bedroom, not sure what to do. We can now hear this thing start to move toward the house. And in that moment, to our horror... Luckily, all the doors were locked, but we started hearing this thing violently rattling all the door handles down on the first floor. How terrifying. This went on for probably about 20 minutes or so before it just suddenly stopped. We didn't dare look out the window to see if it was still down there. God forbid it would catch us looking and stare back at us. We stayed there, pale as sheets, terrified out of our minds, knives in hand, waiting for the end of the world. All the night sounds had stopped. Before there were crickets. Now it was nothing. We stayed like this till probably about 4.30 in the morning, when his mother got up for work. Of course, this morning, she was being extra noisy, and we could hear her marching up the stairs, busting open the door, asking us why we had the knives and why we're still awake. John tried to explain to her that he could have sworn there was an intruder, which she seemed to half buy it and half not buy it. But everything was perfectly normal after that. She left for work at 5.30 like she usually does, no problems. Never saw anything, never heard anything. We finally tried to get some sleep at about 6 or 7 once the sun came up. But man, that was easily probably the freakiest encounter we've ever had. I don't know what it is that we saw that night. I don't think werewolves are real, but this was obviously some sort of creature out of a nightmare. I don't know. I don't want to know where it came from. But all I know is I don't want to see it again. I hope I don't see it again.